Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Zandra, the host for the Twitter space and the community manager of Charmverse. So for those not familiar, Charmverse is a Web3 community platform, and it's there to help you manage members, coordinate tasks, facilitate decisions, and hold each other accountable. Members sign in with crypto wallets and gain access via community tokens and NFTs, and it brings together onboarding, payment management, proposals, project trackers, and data repositories all in one place. So if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to do so, but not until after the space today. So we are joined in this space by Alexa Mill. You also might know her as Dow Alexa on Twitter. She is a legal professional with a background in tech startups and the blockchain industry. She's passionate about decentralized autonomous organizations, also known as DAOs, as well as the potential of blockchain and decentralization. So not to mention, she's also a Charmverse brand ambassador. So really excited to have her here. Hey, Alexa, thanks for joining me. Hey, Darren, thank you very much for having me. I'm super excited about this talk today. Yeah, I'm really glad. How are, how are you doing? How's your day going? I'm going great, thank you. How about yours? It's going well. It's going well. Um, so tell us first, since you're a big Web3 enthusiast, how did you first land in Web3? Well, that's that was that kind of happened completely <laughs> accidentally since I was looking for job change and I was looking for something new, something different. I wasn't sure what I would want to do. I just wanted to quit my previous role. And uh, I applied for a project, for a project role, like a project manager. And, um, you know, that was the first time I heard about DAOs. I didn't know what DAOs were. I didn't care much. And then <laughs> as I got involved in the project, I started learning about DAOs. And I really, you know, really liked the whole idea of DAOs and decentralization. And, of course, I've always known about blockchain and crypto, but never, you know, never was, went into details. But with that with that project I started learning more and more and you know that was kind of like you know one of those moments that happen and they kind of change your life and um that was the job for me and from there on I was mainly focused on DAOs helping them establish frameworks for governance operations and since I have legal background I hope I also devise projects on the legal and regulatory matters I do it on a high level and more on a global level. And as I've been involved in the space, I had the opportunity to meet many different builders and lawyers. So I can like work with both sides and um, you know advise and help and contribute anywhere I can. I've been involved in a number of DAOs in different capacities as a member, as a contributor, as a consultant, as an advisor, as an educator, as a co-founder. So I've been doing a lot in space since <laughs> since that accident. <laughs> yeah, you really have been doing a lot. If anyone's following you um, here or on LinkedIn or on your other page, DAO Today, it's you are, you're, you're kind of all over the place. And I would consider you kind of a master of DAOs. So that's kind of what we're going to jump into. But I guess if you needed to say what your expertise is, would you say it's really designing the governance and operations frameworks? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like my specialty is something that I definitely enjoyed the most doing. And also with the product development and helping with legal, it kind of everything goes together, to be honest, because if you want to build, if you want to build a proper governance and ops framework, you really need to understand what the product is about and what the business is about and what the long-term goals are. And on the other hand, you also need to understand the community that is supporting that project. And if, you know, if there are areas where you can help upskill and teach the founders and the team that is involved on a daily to day day to day basis, that's something that I that I also do. So are you working as a consultant at times for these DAOs? Yeah, I work either as a consultant or as an advisor. That's great. 
So we're kind of getting free consultation advice today, it seems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you hear about governance a lot, of course, and it's often a big challenge that DAOs have to negotiate or navigate. Um, what would you say are some of the most common issue issues that you come across and suggestions that you might have to navigate them? Well, generally when it comes to, to the governance specifically, uh, I would like, you know, the number one issue that I see is the lack of incentivization for members and contributors. You know, when I, whenever I get in a call with the project, like, you know, the first thing I ask, so what is your governance? What is your incentive system? And the response I get to that is, well, you know, we have a token, <laughs> but there are no actual you know, developed ideas on how you could actually utilize that token to incentivize the members, to incentivize the contributors to keep on contributing and being involved in the project. Another very common issue that happens, you know, with the governance is also understanding what voting type is the best applicable for the project and what are the risks of each. And whether you implement any additional mechanisms to, um, to you know, for example, if there, if there is a whale attack, right? Like, is there a trigger, you know, to a different mechanism that happens that can kind of like stop the whale from hijacking the governance? And then, of course, like any illegal and in- compliance issues that may arise with governance. So, I would say like those are some of the most common issues that I've been encountering so far. And of course, like the issue of centralization as well. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point. The voting type, even just every DAO operates so differently. So what this DAO is doing over here doesn't necessarily make it the right operating style for maybe a smaller DAO or a larger DAO. Um, so I think, yeah, having some guidance and what might be best for that specific DAO. So you, oh, go ahead. No, I mean, I just want to say like, you know, I've been seeing a lot of that, like, you know, well, you know, it worked for this DAO, so it's going to work for us too. It most probably won't because the governance is made with the goal to govern that very specific community and the governance should be tailor-made for each and every community so it can respond to the needs, right? So um, it's a decentralized environment. People come from, you know, from different backgrounds with different skill sets, you know, with different knowledge and understanding of DAOs and decentralization and also commitment to the project, et cetera, et cetera. And that is unique to each DAO. So it's not something you can just kind of like copy paste and, uh, you know, I'm also not really a big fan of, you know, some, mm, you know, three-click tools that help you launch the governance and then you're settled. <laughs> it doesn't really work that way because if the governance of the project is not built out well, well, you know, that could be detrimental for the project in the longer, in the longer run. Right. It might le- lead to people being less engaged if that tool isn't kind of honed less engaged and also you know whether because like after all the governance should actually support like the business model of the project and we all know that you know business model for each and every project is different and um it's not something that you can just have done you know with three clicks it actually needs to be built up and improved over time and the governance is there to be you need to keep working and improving governance if you want it to actually make sense and support the project longer like in the um, longer term and keep the community involved because if the project is failing the community is just gonna lose interest to be involved right it's not just kind of a set it and forget it thing it's something that constantly needs to be worked on it seems yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, we just talked about you doing consultation, but you do consultation and advisory services, not just for DAOs, but for lawyers, for other blockchain-based projects, as well as Web2 businesses. So what kind of services are we talking about? What does this look like? 
Yeah, so I help, I mean, my specialty are DAOs for sure, but I do not think that each and every project can be and should be a DAO, right? Because it really depends on, you know, what their, you know, what are the goals of the project, you know, whether there is an actual plan towards decentralization, because the fact is that many projects do not want to, in fact, decentralized and if you don't want to decentralize to an extent you cannot really be a decentralized autonomous organization um i also help i'm currently involved in a few gamify projects and nft projects so it generally really depends on the on the project itself like one i'm supporting um with the fundraise so basically what i do there i help them prepare everything with an investor would want to see before deciding to invest any money, right? So the pit deck, data room, and preparing also the legal docs and everything, you know. So when one and starts talking to investors, they have everything, um, everything in one place. And then I another project I support as a legal coordinator. So basically, they're. They're a very big DAO and very, very decentralized and they fall under different jurisdictions and looking to incorporate different entities. So I'm kind of like, uh, some sort of like an aggregator there because I follow regulations on a global level for both DAOs and crypto assets. So I'm generally, you know, quite good with raising any potential of red flags and understanding how we can mitigate them have a very wide network of lawyers. So I connect, collaborate with them. And kind of like bridge, um, bridge the two, and um, you know, for um, for one, another project, I'm kind of like developing, like working on the product and leading the product efforts. So you know, really, it really depends on the project. But like, since I've been doing loads of things in the space, and they all intertwine is my kind of like kind of support like a variety of things yeah you seem to kind of it's all encompassing you do a lot of things yeah. from i didn't realize that you're helping people put together like pitch decks to prepare for investor yeah. meetings and real that's a big brunt of the work but i suppose some of these people have these great ideas but they don't necessarily know how to go into one of those meetings um prepared in the way that they should be so um yeah, very impressive. Also, any if anyone does have questions, please raise your hand. We're happy to answer some things. I do want to say anything said today is not legal advice. We're just kind of talking through suggestions or experiences, challenges. So no, no financial, no legal advice coming through today. Um, are you currently a member of any DAOs? And if so, are you are you willing to share which DAOs? Well, I am a member of few. I, I am working with Real Change DAO, where it's uh, basically real estate DAO. What we're doing, we're um, we are creating a real estate tokenization platform, and also working on developing um, capability of people for people to mint their home into NFTs which would facilitate the whole sale process and would enable holding all necessary information in one place. I mean, who is from the States <laughs> probably knows what the pain in the ass is when you're actually looking to sell your home and how much paperwork and everything you need to do. So what you want to do is to use blockchain technology to facilitate that process and make it as seamless as possible. And then I'm a member of Bankless DAO. I've been a uh, governance uh, coordinator for the Legal Guild for a few seasons. And uh, as of these seasons, I, as of this season, I joined the Grants Committee. So uh, I'm kind of like involved in a bunch of different things within Bankless, in mostly on the governance uh, on the governance side. And then I'm involved in that. I'm helping actually launch that uh, Gamify project. It's going to be like some sort of like more a hybrid solution rather than, um, you know, 
then pull a decentralized DAO and I'm contributing in some others on free time when I have. Do you get recruited by DAOs? It seems like you have so many skills that DAOs would be like, we need her in our DAO. Well, to be honest, like really depends. And, like I was a big fan of Bankless for a very long time until I kind of like quote unquote <laughs> officially joined it and was involved um, like quite actively since day one. And uh, for the real estate, for real change, uh, I actually met the founder in one of the Twitter spaces. <laughs> and then we started ch- chatting and she asked me to. Uh, be on she has she has like a few startups in like a, a small <laughs> ecosystem of startups so i joined like uh the advisory board actually the director boards and then the DAO and the others so and i don't know the gamify project um i came they came in as a referral from a partner and then they asked me to stay on with them and same with some others as well so it kind of like honestly just happens not that so thought it seems it just rather you know a bunch of people in the space and you know things happen (laughs) yeah it kind of happens more organically yeah so let's talk from your perspective some challenges and some advantages of DAOs um let's start with advantages what do you see as some of like the top advantages of DAOs well I love the the I mean, the whole premise of decentralization with DAOs because they do bring a very different mindset and different way of organizing and structuring than traditional world that we know today. I'm a big fan of freedom and of having people and, you know, people being able to to work from anywhere to build based on what they like and what they're passionate about rather than just be kind of submitted to the office job and have no safe in anything that happens. And um, I love the the fact that DAOs focus more on empowering individuals and creativity and the whole idea of the community-based environment where you know people are in most of the cases very very friendly open to chatting to exchanging and stuff and helping each other grow and um it's a lot i mean i worked in i never worked in a corporate environment i've always worked worked from home could never work in an office and uh being involved in DAOs just kind of like came uh, more of a, you know, next natural step as I got, you know, as I learned more about the space. And I think that each and every person should have that ability to work freely from, from anywhere and building that more inclusive and more equitable word, world than we have it today. Um, and the, I'm not a big fan of centralization and, you know, groups of the select few having the ability to decide other projects and other people's fate and decentralization is all about breaking that down. So those are the things kind of like high level, what they like about DAOs and decentralization in general, the disadvantages of DAOs. Well, it's kind of like a tricky question because like DAOs have so many flaws, but it's not their fault. <laughs> and um, they're, we are so early in the development. And uh, even though I know, you know, whenever I say that we're too early in the space, you know, someone is rolling their eyes in my comment. But the fact is that, you know, that was the first one was in 2016, but nothing, but they were not as popular until let's say 21. And back then in 21, you had only around 700 of them. Fast forward a year later, you had over 6,000 DAOs, and now you have over 12,000 DAOs registered at least on the deep DAO.io. 
so you have that really big like hyper growth of number of DAOs in the space that we know of and those that we don't know of. The problem that happens there is, you know, you ask a big question like, you know, are those projects really DAOs or are they just calling themselves DAOs? Because centralization is really a big issue in the space and most specifically with DAOs because um, many of the founders see DAOs as just another way to, you know, do a quick raise in and out and uh, see the community as piggy banks and not really care about that community aspect um, and the fundamentals of the space. And that's one of the disadvantages of the DAO. Then the lack of education. Not many really people understand what the DAOs are for and what they're about um, and what the actual potential of DAOs is because um, I don't think we have as many enough, you don't have as many examples in the space to really see what the DAO is and what the DAO could be because many projects are, you know, they're VC funded or they're highly, uh, or they rely on one or two people and you know, there's all again, like, you know, we create that personality called that really, you know, we came to this, this space to kind of like move away from that centralized Web2 mindset. However, we still look for those leaders and uh, for people to look up to rather than really embracing our own voice and uh, abilities, how we can contribute. Um, then another disadvantage of DAOs is just really the fact that DAOs are not really looking at any sort of like a business or revenue model so they can be sustainable longer term. And it's often really just, just comes down to the community investing, which is one strategy, but not the long term one because community cannot be investing money all the time you actually have to build a product you have to build a project that can make you make money to sustain itself then another reason another issue is for example the lack of creating an environment where people would actually want to stay and work in right because uh you know DAOs are great decentralization is great web3 is great but we still have bills to pay and uh, many people who who are involved in DAOs and Web3 projects in general um, cannot earn enough money to actually pay the bills and be fully committed to this space. And then we have a bunch of like really shitty projects <laughs> that, that, taint, like, that kind of like stain the industry as a whole. And that just reflects on on everything. <laughs> It seems like a bit long list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think where you started was like was is fair to say DAOs are still so new, so it might not be fair to say like what are the disadvantages because they're really still trying to figure it out, right? And there's so many different models, so we have a long way to go, I guess, right? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. But I think that it's. I also always like to show both sides of the story, right? Like. We could be like, yeah, DAOs, DAOs are great. Let's, we're all for it. But I think it's important to say, okay, well, we don't have it figured out because there are plenty of skeptics out there. And sometimes the word DAO can almost be like a dirty term. People are like, oh, DAOs, no, we're going to call them in communities instead. But I think it's important to show what we need to work towards, what we need to do better at. Um, so shining light on those things, I appreciate it. And yeah. So how how do we get the word out about DAOs? How do we educate people about DAOs? I mean, you're obviously out there doing a lot of work with DAOs, but you know, you're right. A lot of people don't even know what they are or really why they need to exist. So I guess the question is, how do we get the word out? And what about DAOs would you say would most excite you if you needed to talk to someone that wasn't familiar? 
Well, I always give this example, right? Like, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I was always, I, you know, since forever, I was working remotely, right? Like from home and people would think that, you know, I'm crazy. How can you do a job from home, not going to the office? And um, and then like when COVID hit, everyone had to more, move to, to work uh, from home. And then, you know, when um, it was near the end, like people just didn't want to go back to the office to work. And you had like some really um, high level positions within one, some of the biggest brands in the world would quit their jobs because they didn't want to go to the office and work. And many of those companies actually adjusted their work policy to accommodate, you know, work from home, work from office, offer some hybrid solutions, this and that. So and that really changed the mindset. And I think when it comes to DAOs, how people how DAOs can change the mindset is once people really learn what their power as a community member and as an individual within such a structure could be. And the fact is that if you compare what if you compare like DAO to a traditional legal structure to a traditional company, right? So the main difference is that the DAO enab- empowers creativity, enables an individual to build based on their skills, preferences, experience, whatever they like, as quite often opposed to traditional companies where you just have to do what you're told to do without having much much say. And that that's one of the things that make people really unhappy going to work. And DAOs offering that freedom, DAOs offer that freedom. And once pr- people actually learn and really truly understand that, that's going to be the game changer. Because... You know, you would want to be in a place where you can be creative, where you can do things you like, where you can do things you're passionate about, and where you can manage your own time around, you know, everything else in your life and not having to commute and being able to connect with people from all over the world, access, you know, DAOs open a pool, global pool of talent, talent, right? Like you're not constrained to a specific jurisdiction. You can talk probably like on this space where people from all over the world. And uh, that's really, a lo- you know, makes you learn about that. And the community feel about the, co- the power of the community and what the collective as a collective could do and not be limited and managed by a central authority um you know or a central manager and whatnot and i think that's something you know when people really learn and understand what the DAOs are about and what they offer that's something that will have more people join and where that when DAOs will get that uh that expansion and also of course when we come up with some business models that are sustainable and can actually um you know uh pay the business costs and the employee and the and the contributors salaries or however you call them right right yeah i mean it, it can be really a choose your own adventure right you don't need to worry so much about the the full-time job like you said you have that freedom that creativity along with the community um Choose where you work, choose when you work, choose what you work on. So yeah. um, I love that. Do you think DAOs will be the future of work? Or how do you think DAOs will affect that? I mean, obviously we have a little ways to go, but Yeah, I mean, I think definitely DAOs will change. You know, there are DAOs you're already changing the future of work, right? Like and um, I think Sorry, they already changed the way we work, and they're definitely going to change the future of it. Um, because you know, like currently, what's happening, you know, around the world, like in different countries, where you have some like when they're building like social score system, and if you cross the red light, yeah, you're gonna get some points deducted. I mean, <laughs> or like you know, being threatened that you will have to submit to 
CBDCs and to limitless controls of everything you do or you do not do and uh, other limitations that we've been experiencing in the past years, especially, you know, when the COVID hit, um, like that, that change is just going to come naturally, right? Like, and uh, once we have been better governance systems that are, you know, that have mechanisms that protect the community from um, civil attacks, from governance hijacks, from whales, from whatnot, right? Like from, from everything or a majority of things that, have, that can harm the governance. And as we have those sustainable business models that can pay operational costs and salaries, like a traditional type of organizations are just going to quite die out, I believe. I mean, I don't think each and every person in this world will actually decide to go for a DAO. Far from it, because you will always have people who feel a lot more comfortable and prefer having a nine to five job where they just need to come in, do the work, and get out. And um, and then you have the other type of people who just don't really like that. So, David, I think like the two structures will coexist, but the talent. And the people who really uh, can and know how to innovate will move to DAOs or DAO-like structures that would that will empower and enable their um, their creativity. Absolutely, I think that's a good point. I have a kind of a follow up question. Um, so you mentioned the people that want the nine to five; they feel a little more stable in that. Not saying it is more stable because people can get laid off in, in any role they're in. But um, what about benefits? Because you hear that come up, you know, how, okay. how are people in the States, for example, that's always a big question. It's like, well, how am I going to get my benefits? Um, what are your thoughts as far as people getting benefits through a DAO that they're a part of? <laughs> that's a great question. And I answered one that, or like one that question on, on a Twitter space or actually on a, on, on some call that I had and received such a backlash. Oh for, no. For, for my thoughts, but I didn't mind repeating that again. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Ah, uh, no worries. You know, some's going to like it, some not. So it's kind of like, you all have that. So, I think like it really depends on how you look at DAOs, right? So do you look at them as really decentralized structures or are you uh, looking at them as structures that do enable that a community involvement to a very high degree? And also really depends on how you look at it from the, you know, from the legal angle. Right. So definitely in my experience, people say that having that legal wrapper, having that legal entity is actually centralizing the DAO, it's centralizing the project, which makes the DAO lose its essence. I do understand that perspective, but I disagree with, with it for the reason that having a legal wrapper, having a legal tool, it, having that legal entity is actually just a tool. It's a tool, like it's a, it's a tool to legally protect the members involved, the same way that Discord is a tool to communicate. And I will explain that in a bit detail, so people don't think I'm crazy. So generally, DAOs as not recognized or type of structures um, do not have any legal entity identity. They do not any uh, and with that they do not enjoy any type of legal protection. And usually, what happens in the law is that if there is no existing structure legally defined, then we'll look at the one that is closest to it. In the DAO case, that's a general partnership. General partnerships are business arrangement of two or more people who equally share profits, liabilities, and losses. Meaning if there is one bad actor in the DAO who commits any illicit activities with the DAO assets and the DAO does not have that legal entity, everyone involved 
can be seen legally liable and they can answer with their personal assets, with your car, with your house, with your bank account, because you don't have that legal structure that actually and that actually protects individuals. So that legal wrapper that has that LLC or if it by the law, it, pro- it provides that limitation of liabilities actually provides high level of protection. And whether it's centralization or not, I would rather say that the central decentralization or centralization happens within the governance and the operations, not with that legal entity. Because if the community operations and governance are not built in a decentralized way, I mean, you know, a legal entity makes no makes a difference. And um, why I mentioned this um, to your question is, if you're seeing this, if you see a DAO that only a DAO can be recognized as a decentralized organization if it doesn't have a legal entity, why it should then pay like the employee benefits? Because installing like the employee benefits or contributor benefits or whatnot is actually imitating a very typical LLC structure or any other, and it's actually centralizing the project. Another set of issues that may appear is like if you don't have that legal entity, how do you even actually onboard the contributors to the project? How do you do that legally? How do you even legally pay them? Because if I if I am a DAO and I am using the DAO funds to pay the contributors within my, you know my contributors, right? So. First of all, I am exposing anyone who is in the multi-sig or anyone who has the wallet um, to a variety of legal risks. And I'm also exposing my contributors to a range of legal risks because there is no actual, you know, paper or whatnot, um, any, any, anything in place that says that I'm really paying for the contribution, not for something else. Right, like, and it's important to remember that, even though we live in decentralized <laughs> mindset, in traditional law still applies, like it or not. Taxes, right? Like everyone's favorite topic. That's why you need to have those that payment relationship sorted out, so you don't have any issues with the tax office. On the other hand, if you know, if you do have that entity as a legal tool, like, do you even want to further centralizing by centralizing it, but saying, okay, so I am onboarding officially all these people and I'm going to pay them benefits. But if I decide to pay them benefits, then those contributors cannot be legally seen as independent contractors anymore, which again, you know, depending on the project, depending on the individuals might not be really the best option. So I'm generally not in, I don't think the DAO should uh, be the one carrying out the benefits. It should rather provide good, you know, good reward system. And when I say like reward system, I'm referring to, to the salary kind of system where contributors can actually work and earn enough so they can pay the bills and they can pay the insurance and whatnot. The fact is that, you know, I don't think anyone in the space works in only one, is involved with only one DAO. It's usually several projects or building several of your own, how it usually goes. So I think like looking from that perspective is quite sustainable. But you know, inserting like that sort of like benefits within the DAO system would just centralize it even further. And then it's really difficult to, uh, to quote unquote, defend that decentralized nature of the project if you're copy pasting the traditional structure. That all makes a lot of sense. And I hope I didn't just get you in trouble with people and I hope you don't get more <laughs> backlash for it. 
but it does all make sense. And I think that's, you know, a topic that I hear come up and I think you, it was very eloquently put and very rational and logical. And no, I really appreciate you breaking that down. I also think it's a good point that people are working in multiple DAOs or people are coming and going from DAOs pretty fluidly. So, you know, how, how do you manage that? That just seems like a whole nother can of worms if we're trying to set people up with benefits. Um, so thank you. Do you consider yourself a decentralization maxi? (laughs) (laughs) Am I just Um, asking like all the terrible questions that are going to get you in trouble? (laughs) No worries. I mean, I believe in decentralization. I do believe that decentralized, you know, the future is decentralized 100%. But I'm not convinced that decentralization 100% is possible. And um, I think that not each and every project can be and should be decentralized or built as such, right? So um, I'm a big believer in decentralization. Um. But, you know, I mean, you know, it depends how you define the maxi, right? Like, you know, I'm not like a Bitcoin maxi that hates all the rest. <laughs> right, right. And, and, you know, so I'm not decentralization maxi that hates <laughs> anything besides it. But I'm a big believer in, um, you know, and I preach decentralization wherever, whenever I can and wherever I go. So... You know, I'm not sure whether I answered your question, but... No, I think there's a time and a place. Sometimes there's a time for more moderation, but you believe in the potential of decentralization. 100%, right? Okay. (laughs) It's, you know, is the the best way to go, but it's not the only way because, again, like, you know, we are not all the same and not everyone, you know can really grasp and understand like what the central decentralization is all about and really build in that decentralized manner. I mean, you know, I, I would get in a call with projects and be like, Oh, DAOs are so cool. And like in decentralization is so cool. Like that community, woohoo, let's go. <laughs> and then I ask a few questions. I'm like, you know, when I hear that, like, I just know which question to ask is whether, well, do you understand that with the DAO in the community and decentralization, you actually have to give up your power? And they were like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> like, well, you know, if you go the DAO and decentralization route, right? Like, you have to decentralize that decision-making power over time. And, you know, you're not the only one making all the decisions on what the project is going to do and what the business is going to do and what everything is going to be about. And then it's like, well, we just want to do that. (laughs) Well, never mind. (laughs) Yeah, because like, how can we trust others? They're going to make the right decision. And this is our idea. And I'm like, you know, I scratch myself. And I'm like, you know, what the the fuck face? (laughs) You know, which is actually my avatar in a way. (laughs) So I'm like, so why do you want to do the DAO? Well, you know, we think it's cool and we can raise money and that's basically it. But we don't really truly want to decentralize. And, um, you know, I really think that the people who cannot decentralize is decentralize the power and, you know, really, un- really be part of this. I think they should stay out of it. Yeah. <laughs> because they're harming the environment. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, Take your do your thing. We're gonna do our own thing, but do not ruin ours and why we are here. Because it's right. happening a lot, a lot in the space. Like it's unbelievable how much of a, how many of CEOs of DAOs have met. <laughs> I think more CEOs in the past few years, right? Like more DAO CEOs than actually web two company CEOs have met, and that is just bad. Yeah, well, that's not supposed to be a thing. Well, that's the whole point, right? Like you're not supposed to necessarily have the CEO. Um, yeah. Is, well, yeah. you're not. <laughs> right. Like that is the idea. And then I attended the panel, like I was listening to the speakers and they were like, well, 
you cannot have the community decide. So you actually have to have high level of centralization. And I'm like, are we on a DAO panel or what happened here? <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, I think it's <laughs> very early yes. <laughs> and everyone is got to get. <laughs> yes. Yes, so. definitely. Interesting. Well, I'm going to go a little lighter now. I'll stop asking you questions that are going to get you in trouble. Um, I have to let the audience know about your podcast called Dow Today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You can find it. It's at Dow underscore today is the Twitter space. But tell our listeners what kind of content they can expect to learn from these podcasts. Well, the podcast is about DAOs and blockchain, of course, and uh, the focus is rather on education. And what I do is I bring lawyers from the space and the episodes are not as boring as you would expect them with a lawyer. <laughs> um, because what we do there is we break down really complex topics. And the idea is to explain, you know, what is happening in the space uh, and what are the potential issues in a very, very easy way. So, you know, just about anyone who is getting involved can understand and see what they can do to kind of like mitigate some of the legal compliance risks, understand and learn about new regulations and how they could potentially affect their project. And the idea actually came from me doing your research, like preparing my the course for the master's program I'm teaching. And I just I just found so much shitty content on DAOs, like I was about to cry. And uh you had no really real education on the topic. So lawyers who've been involved in the space for for some time have done some amazing work. And you will discuss topics on like, you know, how do you land a, jo a job in a DAO? Um, what are, for example, like NFT and IP issues, how to protect your NFT art, then, you know, what are securities and why are securities so shitty and uh, how you can address some of the things then the importance of economics, how to build strong economics. So, you know, kind of like basics from people who actually did that. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely just a wealth of knowledge that people should be checking out. And I misspoke. Uh, Delexa does have another space at Dow underscore today, but the actual podcast can be found at Dow today dot IO. Yep. Um, well, we are running short on time as I kind of expected. So I'm not going to get as much as I wanted to as many questions as I wanted, but I want to give you an opportunity to tell us what's next for you and what we should be keeping an eye out for. Yeah, thanks. Um, so right now I am kind of like um, working on the new concept of the podcast and some of the new episodes. So that's coming and I will start organizing a series of educational uh, events uh, on Twitter as well. And um, I'll be publishing a series of educational articles on DAOs, for example, DAOs and IP, DAOs, DAO legal challenges, DAO and general partnerships, um, on tokenization. So it's going to be a lot of learning, but easy to read and sometimes funny. <laughs> funny as well <laughs> to read content um, for, you know, just the, for anyone to, to learn a bit more about the space. And um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of like mo my focus right now, to be honest with you, education and loads of education. And I will see where that takes me. I love that. I, I think we need all the education we can get about this space. Like you said, there's a lot of shitty information out there. So you seem to be a great person to be putting that out. You mentioned that you're teaching a master's class as well. So I look forward to seeing um, that material that you're putting out into the world. So, oh, am I here? Can you hear me? Oops. Can you hear me? 
Uh-oh. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me now? Hello? Are you there? Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Okay, good. Back, so. All right. I think I have an issue with my headphones. Um, so I was just saying, I think that you're a great person to be doing that. We need more education in the space, better knowledge, uh, better knowledge base. So really excited to see what you put out there. Um, listeners, if you are building a project, if you're looking for help to build governance, find utility or build a web three project, please reach out to Dalexa. She can help you and uh, give you a consultation. So please reach out. Um, make sure to follow her, tap on that PFP. It's at Dow Lexa underscore. Also follow at Dow underscore today. Listen to that podcast, DowToday.io. And oh, and also Dow Lexa and I, on behalf of Charmburst, will be hosting Twitter events on a monthly basis. So keep an eye out for that. They're going to be hosted on Dow Lexa's account. So you're definitely want to, going to want to give her a follow so you don't miss out. So, so nice to have you today. Um, you are a wealth of knowledge and a pleasure to talk to. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so looking forward to our spaces and other events we're going to be doing. And they all going to be for educational purposes. And we'll be bringing different people from the space who have done things and who can offer um not device, but they can share their knowledge and hopefully answer some of your questions you may have. Absolutely. So yeah, listeners, make sure you're following everyone so you know what's going on. And Alexa, again, thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for taking the time to chat and share your knowledge with us. Thank you, you too, and have a great day. All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Thanks.